Did you know that humans share 99.9% .9 of the same genetic material? Well, that was really exciting news for me because that means that I'm 99.9% .9 similar to Ariana Grande. But I should not have gotten too excited because that 0.1% that makes us different is actually really important. And that's probably why Ariana Grande sings like her and I sing like me. Anyways, these tiny genetic variations between us are also the reasons why some people respond differently to the medicines that our doctors give us. Now, researchers have started to harness the technology of the human genetic code as the future of drug therapy in a new field called pharmacogenetics. Now, I know that when I heard this term for the first time about a year ago, I had no idea what it meant. So let's break it down with the definition from the NIH. Pharmacogenomics uses information about a person's genetic makeup to choose the drugs and drug doses that are likely to work best for that particular person. This new field combines the science of how drugs work, called pharmacology, with the science of the human genome, called genetics. It is really important that when your doctors prescribe medicine to you, that that medicine works in its intended way. You don't want to have too little so that you get no benefit from the drug at all, and you don't want to have too much so that you have an overly amplified response. The Genomics, Proteomics, and Bioinformatics Journal published a study in 2016 that helped to quantify the variance in patient drug response a little bit better. So this study actually looked specifically at the CYP2D6 gene, which is a gene that is primarily produced in the liver and it's already been linked to be responsible for a lot of drug metabolism. Preemptive genetic screenings put patients in either the poor metabolizer or ultra rapid metabolizer category. And what the researchers found was that there was almost a tenfold difference in the dosage necessary between a poor metabolizer variant and an ultra rapid metabolizer variant to reach the same blood plasma concentrations and there for the same drug response. Take this table for instance from the Clinical Pharmacogenetics Implementation Consortium. This table has a total of 416 different entries and it's kept up to date with the last modification occurring on September 20th, 2020. This table shows the FDA's published data of all gene drug interactions in which there has been significant evidence to prove that there is a correlation between the specific genetic variation and the effect on the body that the drug will produce. Out of the 416 different entries, 85 of the gene drug interactions are clinically annotated as either 1A or 1B. That means that these gene drug interactions have high evidence with many replicated trials and they are reported with significant levels of statistical evidence. An entry that is labeled as either genetic testing required or genetic testing recommended means that there is some form of genetic testing that is either required or recommended to be conducted prior to the use of this drug. And there are 22 entries that are labeled this way. So what might the genetic testing process look like if we get prescribed one of these medications in which our DNA could possibly change the effect that it has on our bodies? Your doctor may recommend you to a company called GeneSight, which is DNA testing specifically for psychiatric and depression medications. This is an example of a genetic test report that you might receive, and on it, it shows significant gene drug interactions. A white circle indicates that the patient has a normal genotype, and a black circle indicates that a variation was found in the patient's genotype that may impact the medication response. This can be really important information for a doctor to have in order to tailor a treatment plan that has the best chance for an optimal outcome. So what I really like about this genetic testing company in particular is that they acknowledge how advanced the technology is that they're using. And they also acknowledge that because of that, not everybody has the easiest access to it. On their website, they show that they are helping more people access their technology with a statistic that says 95% of their patients pay $330 or less. 
They also have the list of insurance companies that will cover the testing. Pharmacogenetics is one of the hottest topics in medical research right now, and the difficult process of establishing answers to different drug types, dosages, and DNA is still being established as we speak. I know a lot of people, including myself, are really excited to see where this new technology takes us. I know that I watched for a lot of years as doctors struggled to properly treat my sister with her diagnosed depression and anxiety. Not every medicine made her feel better, some amounts were too much, and some of the medicine she had really bad reactions to. I think that it is definitely in our near future that pharmacogenetic therapy will be used to replace the old mentality of pharmacology that all medications are one size fits all in order to give people a more personalized treatment plan.